A boss threatened to call the cops on a worker after they resigned and stopped responding to messages. A worker shared in a Reddit post that their boss doesn't seem to understand the words I quit and has been hounding them to take their job back ever since. The worker quit their job with a text message very clearly detailing why they were leaving and that they were immediately disabling the phone number for their job so they wouldn't be reachable. Seems pretty direct, right? But this boss was not having it and the boss threatened to call the police on this worker for a wellness check if they didn't start responding to messages. And the worker was understandably left pretty shocked by the lengths the boss will go to to get back an employee they never appreciated before they quit. It's a true don't know what you got till it's gone situation. But more importantly, false wellness checks are extremely illegal. State and local laws vary as to whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, but it's taken very seriously as false wellness checks pull resources away from legitimate calls. It's so serious, in fact, that it's one of the few forms of speech that is not covered by the First Amendment. As for the harassment this worker is receiving, that unfortunately probably doesn't rise to the level of illegality. Typically, that only applies to situations where there's some sort of retaliation for whistleblowing or filing a complaint. But state laws vary widely on this topic as well. So lawyers recommend workers that are in this kind of situation contact an attorney to make sure they know all of their rights and means of recourse. Regardless, the moral of this story is to just treat your employees right while they're working for you and then you won't have to worry about them leaving. And seriously, if you're thinking of calling the cops on an employee who's recently resigned, get a grip. And now for the latest from the unhinged boss's file. A boss emailed his staff to say that he was annoyed and embarrassed that his staff was out eating lunch during their lunch breaks. Career coach Ben Askins shared the story after receiving a copy of the email in an anonymous submission. In the email, the boss said that while his employees are entitled to a lunch break, wow, what a generous guy, he's making a new rule that the staff will have to eat lunch at their desks the next time the CEO wants to pay a visit. Because he said it was very embarrassing when the CEO stopped by at 12.15 one day and the whole staff was out to lunch. You know, on account of that being lunchtime. Being embarrassed about that is absurd enough on its face. But then he asked his staff to show a little more dedication. You know, instead of being the type of lazy doofuses who eat food. And that he expects to know where his team is at all times. That too is absurd because this is an office full of adults and not a kindergarten, but also because it's been proven that taking an actual lunch break away from your desk makes employees more productive. And employees say they feel more productive when they take an actual lunch break because it helps them clear their minds and conserve their energy for the rest of the day. So instead of worrying so much about what it might look like that his staff takes a break to eat a meal, he might want to lay off the lunch patrol and suggest that perhaps the CEO could schedule his visits during the other seven hours of the workday. A toxic boss told a single mom of a sick child that she needs to put work first. The baffling story was shared by TikToker Chris Donnelly, who shared the text exchange between this employee and her boss. Essentially, her son became suddenly ill and she messaged her boss, explaining that she wouldn't be at work the following day. There was an important meeting scheduled for 3 p.m. and she said she would call in to attend it. The boss did not agree with her decision to call out, said the meeting was important to the firm and that she should be there. When she asked the boss what she was supposed to do with the sick kid. He told her that he has kids as well and that sometimes work comes first. She didn't want to have to explain that her situation as a single mom is worlds apart from his life situation. And he said he didn't want to get into a whose life is worse competition. After some additional back and forth with her boss, she called him out for being deeply inappropriate and said she was taking the situation to HR. Illnesses are out of our control. And while it can be difficult for bosses to find coverage when people are out ill or caring for a sick child, they should never attempt to guilt or force staff members to come in. This woman let her boss know as soon as possible that she would be out and she kept the lines of communication open. And she should not feel guilty about having to take time off work to care for her child. That's why companies offer sick days in the first place. A boss demanded that a hardworking employee come back from their lunch break now because there was just too much work. Career and management expert Ben Askins highlighted the text exchange on his TikTok channel. And in it, the boss demanded his employee cut his lunch short because they were swamped back at the office. And when the employee understandably expressed his shock, the boss told him that lunch breaks were no longer allowed and that he and his colleagues would instead be paid an extra half hour at the end of each day. Which is, of course, extremely illegal. It's also extremely unethical and, like, immoral and bad for business. 
months. Taking breaks has conclusively been shown in multiple studies to increase productivity in the workplace. And mistreating employees affects their morale, which makes them do what this employee ended up doing, which was quit right there on the spot. And the kind of turnover that results when employees are this burned out, or turnover for any reason for that matter, costs businesses a lot of money, as much as two times the departing employee's salary. If doing the right thing by your employees doesn't matter to a boss, wouldn't you think he'd at least want to do what's right by the business? As Askins explained in his video, it's the boss's responsibility to hire more people if they're understaffed, not force employees to forego their lunch breaks. And screwing employees over like this just causes more problems than it solves. It's bad for both productivity and morale. And if you have a boss like this who refuses to spare you a few breaks each day, you deserve so much better. After a woman quit her job with a month's notice, which I think we can all agree is beyond generous, her boss tried to tell her that she was mandated to work another three full months in order to train her replacement. The woman named Sally shared the email she sent to her boss with work culture guru Chris Donnelly, and it was a very professional, compassionate resignation. But her boss, Alex, wasn't having it, saying he was furious that he wasted two years training her and found it absolutely appalling that she was quitting. Okay, have you tried getting a grip? Especially since they had spoken about a supposedly mandatory three-month notice period many times before. That's not a reasonable request, though, so it's not exactly surprising that she didn't honor it. Plus, her contract clearly stated that only one month was required. Even her HR rep backed her up because a verbal agreement wouldn't supersede a written contract. But Sally felt so gaslit in the situation that she even hired a lawyer to make absolutely sure she wasn't in breach of any laws or regulations. Surprise, she wasn't. But her situation speaks to an all-too-common reality many employees face when they decide to resign from their positions. The resignation process is often totally unpredictable and often involves a lot of shame and judgment from management. Many bosses also retaliate by trying to make the environment even more toxic to punish the departing employee. That's why it's important, even in the best of jobs, to do what Sally did. Know your employment rights. And if your boss tries to take advantage of you, stick up for yourself. After calling in sick at his job, a man's boss showed up at his front door, telling him to get dressed and get to work. Career expert and management coach Ben Askins was sent doorbell camera footage of the incident, in which the boss would not take no for an answer, and told the employee he was desperate and couldn't finish a job without him. And when the employee said no like any reasonable person would, the boss said, oh come on, it can't be that bad. The dude's got guts, I'll give him that. When the worker told his boss for the final time that he was sick and not coming to work that day, the boss responded by threatening him, telling him he would be fired if he didn't throw some clothes on and get to work. Askins was left speechless by the altercation as any normal person would be. After all, no one plans to get sick. As you can probably hear in my voice, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> and yeah, it's often a huge inconvenience when workplaces are shorthanded because someone's sick. But no one should be forced to come into work when they're too sick to do so. And a boss showing up on your doorstep to demand you come in? Not only is that a wild violation of privacy and boundaries, but in some cases it could even violate employment laws. Not to mention that if an employee comes in sick, they might infect the rest of the staff. You know, we just spent a whole pandemic kind of learning about this, and if that happens, you're going to have a much bigger problem than just one employee being out. Aside from everything else, it's just really bad management. This shouldn't even need to be said, but give sick employees the time they need to recover. It's better for everyone involved. <laughs> 